This over here is the ASUS ZenBook 14X OLED. And you might be a little bit confused, like I was. You look at this laptop, which is the ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 OLED, then this one and that one look very, very similar, especially when you look at the specs. But the price point for this one is a lot cheaper. Why? Well, let's have a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So what I have here is the UX3404 model. Uh, there is the i9-13900H and if I'm not mistaken this is the RTX 3050 model okay as you can see you open it up boom it comes up like that Asus OLED which is now called Asus Lumina OLED we've got the laptop some literature Nothing on this side. I'm just wondering if Asus Pen is the one that could have gone in there. And then on this side, we have the power brick. Now, here's one of those things that makes it a lot different. This is the ZenBook Pro power brick in here. This is a 200 watt one. And then look at this tiny one here. It's literally half the size. And this is only 100 watts. And interestingly, this is USB-C, which means that you can actually buy third-party power bricks. There's some much smaller ones like from Anchor or some other brands that offer USB-C charging, which I like. I like USB-C. I wish the USB-C would support more, like up to 300 watts, so we wouldn't have to have separate plugs, but we could all get it through USB-C. Then on the other side of the brick, you've got the three-pin plug. And let's have a look at this laptop. Look at that. Best laptop brand winner 2020. Well, it's 2023, so we're blowing some old whistles here. Obviously, we've got OLED, which starts to become like the standard on laptops, but it's still a very new technology. Ish new, but um, for laptops, it's new, not new technology. For creators, that is amazing because we get color accuracy, 100% DCI-P color space, which means wide range of colors. If you're working with like log formats or something, video, that's amazing. High contrast ratio, one million to one. Low blue light, I care. So Asus has done their own like optimization and you know work on the um, OLED to make the OLED even nicer. But let's have a look at these two laptops side by side. So the footprint is pretty much exactly the same. The ZenBook Pro on the side here, I'm not sure if you can see this, is slightly higher, probably because of the feet underneath. These back feet push further out, yeah. So the back here, as you can see, is a bit more elevated than this ZenBook on this side. I like this design here as well. As you can see, instead of having this small logo, what we have here, it's a big Asus logo. It's, it's pretty cool. You can get this in different colors as well. There is a beige um, color for this as well. And as you can see, this one also is a touch screen. Now this is Intel Evo platform. Um, if you look at the ZenBook Pro, then you can see that this is just Intel Core inside, not the Evo platform. But putting them side to side, the keyboard is exactly the same. I'm looking at this uh, power brick from the wattage meter, it's literally pulling 94 watts. Very close to the maximum what it can produce. 95.9. Now, in terms of the trackpad here, the 14X OLED trackpad on this side looks the same kind of width but a little bit skinnier. And then it's because the keyboard has been brought down a little bit. The 14X is, as you can see, this bit here is a little bit bigger than on the ZenBook Pro on that side. Now, you can get numpad on this here as well, on this touchpad. If you press on this side, you can see that numpad will come on, look, underneath. And if we press on that side, we can get color brightness control there. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. So the battery on the ZenBook Pro is six watt hours bigger than on the ZenBook, which is here. Let's take a look at the ports of the laptop. Now looking on the right side, we can see that we have two USB-C ports, one headphone and mic combo, and then one HDMI on the 14X OLED. But the ZenBook Pro has an SD card and then two USB-C ports. And then when you look at the other side, we have only one type A port and which is 10 gigabits in speed. So the ZenBook Pro has much better connectivity. As you can see, two USB-Cs, SD card reader, and then on the other side, we've got an HDMI and then one type A and then headphone and combo jack. On the other side on the ZenBook Pro, we have the you know power input, DC port, HDMI, type A, and then headphone and combo jack. So the ZenBook Pro here only has the SD card difference. There's an SD card reader. Now, one amazing thing about the 14X is that when we push these down, as you can see, the 14X does go all the way flat to the floor with the screen, which means that you can easily use it a bit better to draw on or use something like that. Whereas you can't do that on the 14X Pro, as you can see, that's how far as this goes. For some people, that could be a deal breaker, especially for 2D graders who use an ASUS pen. Okay, I've got both of these laptops here on Cinebench and let's test out how good are they in terms of power management and cooling. This one is pulling 103 watts and this one was pulling 81 watts at first and then 58 now. The Pro is dropping down to 84 and now 4.9. The core clock speeds are 3.3 on here and 2.9 on that one there. As you can see, 15,000 points compared to the 17 or almost 18,000 points. Now, the temperatures here were 97 degrees, but in here, 87 degrees. Let's try one more time. 75 watts, and this here is close to 100 watts. Hovering at 94, this is 82. Interesting, the single core boost clock speeds are both the same on both of them, about 5.4 gigahertz but obviously the Pro keeps the multi-core clock speeds a little bit higher at 3.3 here, whereas the ZenBook 14X OLED is 2.9, just below 2.9. 17.825 and then 15.492. So the multi-core performance is obviously better on the Pro, but not as much as you'd think. The screen on both of them is exactly the same what you can see, but let's take a look inside the laptops. Both laptops also feature Harman and Kardon sound system. So you're not gonna lose out on audio when going with either of these laptops. So now here we can see the big difference of uh, these laptops. First of all, the ZenBook Pro, as you can see, has a much larger motherboard. The ZenBook 14X has only this tiny bit of the motherboard, as you can see here. And then the rest of it is just a big fan in here. So this is a bigger fan than what we have on the ZenBook Pros here. But the ZenBook Pro has dual fans, whereas the 14X has a single bigger fan and then only two heat pipes that go through here. One in here, but dual vents. So there is a little vent on that side as well, but it only blows out from that side and this side. So it's uh, a bit more calmed down. The speakers look very, very similar. So what we can see on the 14X OLED is pretty much no upgradability apart from the Wi-Fi antenna here, which is already quite high end, Intel one. The RAM is soldered to the motherboard, so you're gonna have to decide which amount you're gonna go in the first place. And let's take a look at the M.2 here as well. There is a little heatsink actually that goes over this, but as you can see, this is an interesting, it's a Micron SSD there, 2545. So it looks like you've got one chip missing here. So this SSD could be with two NANs there but everything is on one side. There is a thermal pad underneath as well. So if I can try to take this off, there we go. You can see there's a thermal pad underneath as well, which will just, I don't know what it's gonna call out. Probably for uh, actually just support on there to put the support down like that. 
So this is actually a Gen 3 SSD, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it says PCI Gen 4, but the speeds are only 3.6 gigabytes per second. Let's do a speed test. On the ZenBook Pro, you can see this RAM slot is upgradable, but not in here. That over there is probably our soldered down RAM on that side. Well, the good thing is when you're gonna get this laptop, you most likely are not gonna need to open this up apart if you want to clean it or do some maintenance, but there is no big upgrades that you can do in there. All the screws on the 14X are exactly the same size. So as you can see, these SSD speeds, uh, even though they are Gen 4 drives, we're getting about 3.6 gigabytes per second so it's basically just a lower end ssd nvme ssd but at that point what what you're doing with this laptop what this is aimed for i don't think this is a problem plus you could like upgrade the ssd to a higher one yourself if you wanted to but you then have the faff of installing the windows and installing everything over and over so all in all what is the difference between this 14x and then 14 Pro. Both of them are Zenbox and look very, very similar on the side, but the Pro version will get a higher GPU, which is the 4070, up to 4070, and then the 14X OLED is a 3050 model, which is a little bit lower end GPU. But if you want a small form factor, like a 14 inch on the go, that's still super, super fast, but has perhaps better battery life than the Pro one, then you've got this one here, which has a little bit of lower power limitation on the cpu even though they're running exactly the same cpu i9 13900h both of them the pro version has better cooling which allows the cpu to run a bit faster but also hotter the screen is exactly the same but the screen is actually a little bit more convenient on the 14 x on this side because it goes 100 percent flat down there now the ram is not upgradable on the 14x so you're gonna have to get that you know sorted straight up front which kind of isn't that big of a deal but the 14 pro here is upgradable on one dim slot now if you do want to save money and you're thinking you know what i kind of don't need 4070 on the go and av1 encoding which we have on the pro version because 30 series gpus don't support that then this zenbook might be a very good option for you as a creator especially if you're doing photo editing or maybe some lighter um, 2d tasks even video editing actually is completely fine with this one this is a much more budget friendly option as you can see if you want to check them out i'm going to leave them linked in the description below and if you do want me to check out certain parts of these laptops then let me know in the comment section below as well let's see if we can make these videos happen but perhaps you're not interested in creators and you're more interested in PCs, then check out the PC build guide in the description below where I have four part series of the best bang for buck creator PC builds. Which means that if you're a creator and you're looking for a PC that is the best performance for your money, then those videos down there are for you. As always, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.